plants that you can't get this sort of size. They're unbelievable. I mean, the mother-in-law's cushion here, the Achilla cactus crusonii. Look at them through one of Jim's friends. Absolutely amazing. And away from me po po pointing out every single plant that would take the next week or so, just to tell you about the achievement, what we're trying to do here. Unlike the garden, as you'll see, the areas aren't in their shapes. The areas I'm talking about are South America, South Africa, Mexico, Southwest States, Arizona, Texas, uh, New Mexico, California in particular, and the Canary Islands. So they're planted in their right places in these five beds, which aren't in their shapes, and silly money open your Oxford Atlas, and we haven't necessarily got, if we have it, to complete fluke the right rocks from their particular areas as well. They're mostly the rocks from dry river basins in Turkey. Especially attractive are the coral-like petrified rocks from dry river basins in Turkey here, a tufa style rock, through to the wonderful sandstone coloration rock used around the bottom. You can't see it because the Hottentot fig is covering that side but we use in, in Africa over there. As I say, 1,634 different types of plant in here. The conditions we keep them in are quite simple. It has to be here as there are just so few, few of us actually in the garden itself. And through Jim's advice, through books, the internet and everything else, we keep it to a system that's simple but works for here. Kept at above if the heating doesn't fail. Kept at plus three or four degrees with two he heaters, two for thirty pounds. B and Q Dartford <laughs> placed right underneath each one of these cold air fans. Forty pounds for two B and Q Dartford, which then circulate the air, the hot air rising and circulating the air. So it's about keeping it above freezing. Yes, but with the real movement in the air is really important as well. With good ventilation on the sides and in the two doors, not too bad. The summer temperature in here this year was 38.6 so it can get pretty warm as you'll feel now. Initially you think oh it's not that bad in here even on quite a oh, nice October day. It's quite warm when the sun gets on this quite south facing area of the garden in this structure. It is just half a poly polytunnel to put it simply that's all it is at four and a bit thousand pounds. Money entirely raised by a little plant nursery at the top of the garden is funded by you being here today through the plant nursery uh, and me giving talks. That's how the whole place is, is funded. And on the wall there, will, will, will at work again. He made the pineapple, which we've walked past, but you'll see in a minute, so you've seen it, we'll know what I'm talking about, and the baobab. He did a, a desert sunset against the wall. I think you'll agree, we originally were going to paint cacti on the walls, but I think cacti themselves do the talking when they're against the walls. Great fun, great fun. And the other interesting thing for me about this is how simply we've done it with what they're growing in. It is about 40 or tons barrowed in like the 18 tons of pathways and some of the rocks. Entirely bar barrowed in literally in three barrows from the Black Gates where some of you parked directly outside the gatehouse and the yew hedge. It is made entirely by three barrows being barrowed in because the lorry wasn't big enough to get to, too big enough to get through the gates itself. And what we've used is just builder's ballast mixed with Leventon's multi-purpose compost in a cement mixer outside with no cement or water obviously <laughs> and brought in barrow uh, by barrow in February, March last year. As I say, a year and a half ago you were standing on <laughs> Uh, lawn with a derelict little greenhouse that has fallen apart in the middle. So quite good fun. In the planting hole itself we have added some more compost and a bit of a slow release fer fertiliser but not much more than that. The, ol the oldest one that we know of, Jim will com correct me on this if I'm wrong, is that the cactus, the biggest, not the tallest but the most robust uh, ca cactus in the middle there of the South Amer American um, section of bed and that was from for five pounds I paid for it. It's quite a sad story, we won't go into it too, too much from Hollygate Cactus Nursery down the A24 Billingshurst Way. Sadly now pretty much no longer anymore Jimus, is it? One of the finest collections in the UK is pretty much not there now but we got that on top of the Astra we mounted it on the Astra car still going to this day and brought it up two hours from Hollygate Cactus Nursery. We couldn't really touch it. It's prickly, yes, but I don't just mean that. For ourselves, 
not to get damaged, but also it was quite sensitive. Beyond those spines, it's quite soft tissue. So we just got polystyrene trays whilst it was in the ground in this greenhouse, sewn years and years ago. Polystyrene trays, granny's tights to secure the tray, <laughs> and then some clothes, hats, a few tea cozies, I love my hats, through to trousers, jumpers and everything else, more of granny's tights. Then the ladder alongside Granny's tights, the trays and the clothes. The ladder then tied to the cactus and with two people holding the, la the ladder, pulling the cactus over while someone sensitively digging out some of the roots, we mounted it on our backs and put it straight onto the Astra. I've yet to actually touch that cactus without Granny's tights, plastic and polystyrene trays and everything else. Quite fun, great fun. And I, I agree, I, I know some of you are thinking this, Cacti Tom really aren't my thing. I've had one on the windowsill for years, it's annoying, it prickles me, it doesn't do much. Maybe, but in a display like this, I hope you'll agree anyway, they look quite fun. And they're very, very interesting. Where sizal rope comes from, agave sizal, where tequila comes from, to the left of the spotted one at the front there, agave tequilana. These extraordinary prickly pears, arm to the teeth. These funny horse crippler style Apuntias here. Amazing characters, they really are. And look at this one here, Jim's personal cactus, Botillo Cactus Geometrizans. There's no made in Taiwan sticker at the back. That is actually real, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. And then beyond that, the last thing to point out before we get to the last structure this afternoon yeah. are these hoodie and macrant that call the, the dog poo plants. They've got quite a strong smell. Not so much this afternoon with your food coming up, we don't want too many sniffs of this flower, but it does attract lots of carrion flies to it, to pollination. And after pollination, the seed pods develop quite quickly. There's extraordinary structures that once ripe, spill out this fluffy, quite airy seed. Hoodia macrantha from the Kalahari Desert, Botswana, Namibia, parts of South Africa. It's quite a specialised asclepiad from that area, but, but great fun. Great fun.